I just got an interesting question that I've been getting a lot of lately, which is, should I insulate my ductwork in inside walls and floor cavities? Um, they look at my own house, which has uninsulated ductwork that's in the crawl space underneath my house. And I am not worried about that ductwork getting wet because of condensation in the summertime and then dripping because it'll drip onto a concrete floor, which is kind of interesting for me because now I can see if it's condensating by going down and looking underneath the ductwork and seeing if I see little drip marks. I have not seen any, um, but that is because of a number of different things I'm going to describe in this uh, video, which will have to be quick because I'm about to jump onto another console call. Um, but if you want to join up uh, on our Patreon group, we have group coachings now going on where three people get together and they all talk about their projects within the space of one hour, uh, 20 minutes each. It's kind of cool. It's a cool format that just started today, actually. Um, or you can book a consult uh, for your own project. But this should give you enough like firepower to take into your own weird challenges that you've got and think through this stuff because that's always the goal of this channel. So what we're talking about is uh, in summertime, we've got cold air being generated by your air conditioner. It's going through the ductwork. And when it goes through the ductwork, it's going to cool down the metal of the ductwork. If you're not getting pre-insulated flex duct, which as long as it's taped properly and air from your attic or wherever crazy places you're putting your ductwork, people, uh, isn't able to touch the actual inside portion of the ductwork then you're okay. But if you're going to put ductwork inside of an attic or anything like that, of course you want to insulate it. What we're talking about is inside of most of the homes that my clients are building, we've got ductwork all inside the conditioned space. Do we still have to, to uh, insulate it? So I'd like to point you to a couple things. One is if you go to my website and you go to the very bottom right here, you'll go to calculators and you get access to my favorite psychrometric calculator. I also have a psychrometric chart that I'll talk about in another video um, and all kinds of other really cool calculators I've used on this channel before. But if you go here, you go to the DaytonAshray.org website. So Dayton, as in Dayton, Ohio, Ashray.org. And it gives you a whole bunch of data points. So I'm modeling my house, which is at a thousand feet elevation. We're going to put 50% relative humidity into this house. Uh, in the interior portion, and we've got 75 degrees. 75 degrees, 50% of the humidity is 65 grains per pound of moisture of absolute humidity. It's very comfortable. If you've ever been in a home that's actually able to maintain that, you'll know that it's perfectly comfortable to live during the day, walk around, do active things, and then at night, go to sleep under a comforter, and you're fine. Like, that's, that's a great temperature for all around. We set it and forget it in our house. We don't have setback temperature. So, in that scenario, we have a dew point of 55 degrees and we have a relative or an absolute humidity, which is grains per pound of 67.3 grains per pound. That's basically perfect. 65 is what I was saying is like perfect, perfect. It's fine. It's 65, 67. Now, if I let this uh, go up from 50% to 60% relative humidity, because I don't have a dedicated dehumidifier in my house, then my dew point goes from 55 up to 60 degrees. That means that if any of the surfaces in my home are 60 degrees or cooler, then they will be wet. And 60 degrees is a very yucky uh, temperature to be at because the kind of anecdotal rule of, about this, and it, it, it's different in every system and in every home, but kind of rule of thumb, if you can, if we could just use that for a moment, is that the air conditioner is gonna take air in and it's gonna drop the temperature of that air on the outside of it by about 15 degrees. So if the air is going into my air conditioner at 75 degrees, which is the temperature my house is at, and it's coming out at 60 degrees, that 60 degrees is right at my dew point. So the first couple feet at least of my ductwork, that's metal exposed ductwork in my crawl space, in my uh, conditioned encapsulated attic or inside my wall cavities is going to be wet. I don't like that. So that's why we have something like a dedicated dehumidifier to keep it at 50% to keep this temperature a good five degrees or even more. If I wanted to make this 45% relative humidity, which I've been known to do, now I can keep it a full eight degrees past the point where I think that my air conditioner is going to make my duct work uh, at the coldest. Now, the benefit also of the dedicated dehumidifier at this point is because you're going to be plugging this dehumidifier into the supply, not into the return. It's actually in Florida, it's illegal to plug this dehumidifier's dry air into the return. 
you have to plug it into the supply. The reason we do that is so that we can get the air handler to also dry so that this becomes a supplemental dehumidifier, not the primary dehumidifier. Because if we dump this into the return, it takes away any ability for the air handler's uh, cooling coil to actually dry any air. It's just going to be cooling at that point, which is not good. Is that we're kicking out air again. There's a pre-air temperature and a post-air temperature. Dehumidifier is going to take, like again, rule of thumb, it's going to take air in at 75 degrees, let's just say. And it's going to kick it out about 15 degrees warmer than that at 90 degrees. So the air leaving the dehumidifier is 90 degrees. Now, it's not going to mean that we're going to be heating the house up. If it's a cool day and it's raining and I've got an ERV running that's humidifying my house, then my dehumidifier is running. And then it will eventually warm the house up to the point where the, humidis the uh, thermostat says, I need cooling. And then it'll also kick on the air handler. That's kind of an interesting byproduct. But... If you go to a, uh, an Airstream mixing calculator, and I'm using Munters right now, which is uh, my friend Lou Harriman worked with Munters for a long time. Uh, we're gonna put my house at, again, 1,000 feet up. We're gonna calculate Airstream A, which is the, hu the dehumidifier, kicking out 90 degree air at 30% relative humidity. I'm just kind of making up some numbers right now, but we're gonna make this about 20% of the airflow. Let's say it's about, you know, let's say it's 200 CFM of uh, dehumidifier air next to a two-ton air conditioner, which is kicking out 800 CFM. That's 1,000 CFM total for the two of those combined. 200 then becomes about 20%. And then I've got 80% of the air coming out at 60 degrees, which is my air conditioner. And actually, let's, let's step this back. If we just had the air conditioner not on at all, then the air that's coming out that's mixing the air from the house with the air that's coming from the dehumidifier now is 77 and a half degrees. Obviously that's gonna start warming up the house because we want a 75 degree set point. But once the AC then kicks on and it, this becomes a 60 degree temperature, then it's mixed air temperature, even though some of it is 90 degrees, is only gonna be 65 degrees, which is cooler than the 75 that we want. So that's good, it will be cooling the house net. But also that 65 keeps me away from that dew point temperature. And if you think about it, on the moistest days in your climate, uh, the, the dehumidifier will be running anyway. So on the days when we're most worried about condensation, you'll have this happening if you duct this the right way so that the dehumidifier gets dumped into the supply of your air handler. So this is just like an easy way to start using some math and figure out whether we should be worried or not. I would say, <laughs> end all be all, should we insulate this ductwork if it's inside of a ceiling cavity or a wall cavity? Um, the math says, like, you probably don't have to. If you do everything right and you have an air handler that works well and you have a dehumidifier that's plugged into the supply side and it works and it's monitored properly and you have an airtight home and your ERV is tuned to the right amount, blah, blah, blah. There's a lot of ands in there. There's a lot of assumptions. So I'd say that, like, the insurance policy that insulating your ducts represents is pretty cheap. As insurance policy goes, that's about as cheap as you can possibly get. So I would still probably do it if, and in my home, I did. I insulated it anywhere. The ductwork goes up into places I can't get to later. I went ahead and did it because I just didn't want to worry about that. So I hope that this has been illuminating for you. If you have more technical questions, keep them coming in the comments section. Or as I have clients bringing things up, I'm going to keep on kind of like making little videos like this. So I hope that that makes sense. Tune in next time.